Hi, I'm Gromouse, and you might remember me from such videos as this Canopy 10 teaser video. And this is the video where I show you how I built this light. And if you wanted to build one, you're welcome to, and I'll show you where I got all the stuff to build it. So let's jump right into that. So your first step will be to head over to grabcad.com and I'll leave a link to my profile here in the description of this video. And you head down here and I have some files and these are all the files for the current design of this canopy system, um, including the decorative cover plates for the individual LEDs as well as the central decorative cover plate that says canopy 10 on it, as well as the plate that mounts the driver. Um, and while those two plates aren't necessary, uh, you can get them cut if you'd like. Now, as far as the bracket is concerned, I have two different brackets here. I have the universal bracket, which is what I used uh, for this video and this project. And then I have what's called the non-cutter, which could prove to be slightly cheaper. This is for all you guys that are not using the cutter heat sinks that have the side mounting option. If you're just using a, a standard pin heat sink where there's mounting holes on the face of it where the LED is, uh, you can choose to download the non-cutter version and you're just in the top right of your screen, hit download and you can save it wherever you'd like and we'll upload that to a water jet cutting website. So bigbluesaw.com is one of the water jetting websites that you can get an instantaneous quote online without having to sign in or doing anything. So let's do that now. Start by browsing our folder and we'll select this Canopy Universal Heatsink Bracket. Hit Upload and we can select what kind of material we want to get a cut out of. So aluminum 5052 is one option. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper tool grade aluminum than 6061. It could prove to be a little bit cheaper. So we'll go with that. And we'll go with 0.05, which is plenty thick, but you could go with 0.08 if you'd like. I actually used 0.04 and found that to be slightly flimsy, um, but it still worked great. So 0.05 should give you the, uh, a pretty good thickness. And as you can see here, you can get these things cut. A single bracket is going to cost you $92, which is absolutely insane. At 10 brackets, they're only 11 bucks. So that I found to be fairly reasonable. Uh, but at 50 or more, it gets down to eight bucks. And at 100, bu at 100 brackets, it gets down to seven bucks. So I think there's room here for an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur or someone like that to go get a bunch of these brackets cut and put them up on eBay. But that entrepreneur is not going to be me because I just don't have time to get a bunch of brackets and cut them, get them cut and ship them and all that crap. But uh, this is an open source project. So you have my blessing and my per permission, but you don't need it to go out, cut a shitload of these things and sell them to your friends if you want to. So $8.33 is what you're looking at at quantity. Eleven forty seven dollars is what you're looking at for 10 brackets, which is what I would have paid for, for this if I would have had someone cut them for me. And as you can see here, the non-cutter bracket uh, removes some material and some cutting time, and they're about a dollar cheaper to cut. So I, I put this file in here to save you guys some money that aren't using cutter heat sinks. Uh, you can save a little bit of money there. They get down to $10.37 at quantity 10, and down to, hell, you can get them under 7 bucks if someone wants to make 100 of them and you know put them up and sell them. And this is what I'm calling the LED cover plate. This is purely a decorative panel to provide that finished look that I was able to achieve with the Canopy 10. And as you can see here, at quantity 10, they're $10 each. At quantity 50, they're six bucks and gets cheaper from there. And for the main light engine of this build, I'm using the MAU 5-X or Dash 10 kit from Cutter Electronics. And I don't know the status of the discount code, cut and roll, all caps, all one word, um, because it's back ordered right now. So I can't click add to cart to see if that discount code's still working. Um, so we'll just price it at $971.80 US dollars, uh, the top prices in Australian dollars, uh, for the 10 cob kit, the 10 heat sinks, um, you know, drivers, wiring, connectors, all the, the basic stuff that you would need there. And my understanding is that this kit will be back in stock after the July 4th holiday. 
Now on the 30 millimeter by 30 millimeter 8020 modular aluminum extrusions that I used on this build, I sourced them super cheap, guys. Uh, four bucks for a 48 length, and I realized that that is insanely cheap. This was a sale that is no longer available. The only reason I'm showing you this is this was where I got them, but they're out. Um, you can also source these 8020 extrusions in whatever size you'd like on eBay, as well as 80-20.net. And there are guys sending me emails uh, like Charles, uh, thank you very much. Let me know some companies that are selling 8020. So as I find those sources, we'll, uh, we'll release those to you guys. So this is what the basic starting materials looks like. It is four extrusions that are like 40 inches long and two extrusions that are 24 inches long. And that'll be the basic frame. You can see here, I've got my, uh, my 10 cob kit from Cutter all mounted up with the cobs, and I've got 10 brackets and 10 beauty plates to start the initial assembly. Now for adding the mono or monochromatic colored LEDs, I sourced all of those from Rapid LED. And although Rapid LED does not carry top bins in every color, um, there are some substitutions you can get over at Cutter in a solderless system. Um, this is what I went with. Uh, I've really liked the support from Rapid LED in the customer service and everything like that. But at the end of the day, if I'm going to consume a watt of electricity, I want top bins. So I will show you the top bin options at Cutter in just a second. But let's just price this out to see what I went with. I went solderless and I went with 10 Cree XPE reds, which would be the 620 to 630 nanometer. I went with the Cree XPE photo red. These are the group 14, excuse me, group 13. Group 14 is top bin. They have those at Cutter. Um, but I went with these, and I went with 20 of these. And for what appears to be a blue on your screen, this is actually a UV, um, UVA LED. I went with 10 of these, and I went with the semi-LEDs, ultraviolet 390 to 400. So it's basically like a violet, barely even in the UVA range, but there may be a little bit of uh, UVA light um, that is emitted. And the only reason I went with these is because it was the only UVA available in a solderless on this solderless platform. And I wanted to stick with that to eliminate having to solder. For driving the monos, I went with this LDD 4UP board from Rapid. It's a solderless board that allows you to run four uh, Meanwell LDD drivers. And I chose four of the 700 milliamp, which put me up to $200 worth of LEDs, drivers, and driver board to run the monos to add to the system. Had I chosen to purchase the higher bin stars at uh, Cutter Electronics, uh, this is what I would have gone with, the XPE Group 14 and the 660, um, the 620s, same thing. Uh, these are photographed here as just normal stars, but these are the solderless star option that has like a wire bite type connector that just allows you to plug a wire into it. Um, their UV 400, I added um, these T-tape stars, which is um, pressure-sensitive thermal interface material. It's like a sticker, and you just stick the LED down. You don't have to mess with any two-part epoxy or any drilling and tapping. Um, I applied the discount code cut and roll here, and before shipping, came out to about $194 worth of mono. So if you, if you want to get the higher bins, uh, you can get them there. And lastly, for the integrated controller, I had a Typhon, Steve's Typhon from stevesled.com laying around. Um, they're selling them for $34. Um, this is a discontinued product, but based on the same platform, they're offering now the Hurricane X. If you want to upgrade, it's $60, and it has a little bit smoother dimming and, and possibly some better functionality. Also, side note, they now offer it for our Meanwell HLG drivers. Before, there were a lot of complaints and issues uh, back to me personally about driving HLGs off of the old Typhon, the new Hurricane addresses that. Um, and then to to drive the LDD drivers, I'm going with this Meanwell LRS 150-36 volt um, DC power supply that was $22 from Mouser. So I think that just about covers all of the materials. And with everything preliminarily added up, I've got $1,500, over $1,500 into this light. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's probably more expensive than I thought it was going to be. Um, it was more difficult than I wanted it to be. And I'll be working towards, uh, I'll be working directly with market cutter to 
integrate some of these ideas that I have um, into something that is a hell of a lot easier and a hell of a lot cheaper. But you guys wanted to see the light. You wanted to see how the light was built and you want to know how much it costs and how much is in it um, and what kind of LEDs are in it. So that's what this video is about. It's not about trying to sway anyone into building one. If you want to build one, build one. Um, if you want to buy a light off the shelf for probably cheaper than this, then do that. You know, um, it's your journey. Um, I'm just simply going to report kind of what I did in my journey with this light here. Um, so this video is getting pretty freaking long. So this is part one, and this is just a materials acquisition. Um, and part two will be actually assembling and building the light. One final thing to mention, the colors of the cobs that I went with, I went with six of the 3500K CD bin on the outer perimeter of the fixture. The four cobs that are in the center are two 4K and two 5K, whatever the top bin was available at Cutter. I think it's B, D, boy, dog. Um, I think that's what it was. So um, I, I hope you liked part one. It's pretty dry. Just kind of, there's just a shitload of stuff to cover, man. There's a lot of stuff in this light. So um, yeah, for those of you guys that were interested in it, there you go. And uh, part two, we'll come back and we'll hit you with uh, actually building it in some action shots. And hopefully it'll be a lot more interesting. So stay tuned for that. And it'll be out in a couple days. Uh, thanks for watching.